So this is the age of the laptop musician. This is the period where we're living in music history, and I'm going to explain what it is and why on earth you, as some people who may or may not have an interest in making music directly, should care about it. What this is, is a great sea change in the way music is made, wherein anyone armed with only a laptop and the internet can make fully fledged music that can be listened to by a, perhaps a commercial audience even. Some people see this as a negative thing, a way for mediocre producers and musicians to have a way to uh, flood the market with their own creations. But I see it as a democratization of music that will allow people with radical ideas and uh, perhaps not the thousands of dollars that was previously necessary to make such music, allow them a space to uh, create and a space to innovate. And I think this is indisputably a great thing for the art form as a whole. So to explain where we're going, I think uh, some historical background might be necessary here. So when, uh, the, in the beginning of electronic music, which is the consummate music of the electronic mu uh, laptop musician, I'm one of these people, by the way. Um, the, in the beginning, this is the 50s and the 60s, uh, we have some, a situation similar to uh, the situation computing was once in wherein we have rooms full of equipment that can perform one task, in this case produce one note at a time. It's extremely difficult to use and it's extremely expensive, making it exclusive to people studying in universities and uh, very, uh, very mainstream contemporary composers of the time. And this all changes with the inventions of Dr. Robert Moog, uh, who's in the middle here, uh, we, pictured with his uh, mini Moog, which is one of the very first machines in the classic, sort of now familiar synthesizer build of a keyboard, immediately something understandable to musicians, and controls that all fit on your desk. The, his machines were adapted into uh, progressive rock, and they reached a much wider audience, and eventually electronic music had an audience of its own. These machines that are compact, that are less than $1,000 a piece, that fit on your desk or in your pedal board, became very much a trend, and many companies began to make them. Uh, on the left, here we have some of Roland's most famous machines, uh, the TB303 synth uh, bass synthesizer on the top, and the 606 drum machine on the bottom. So that was a great change, made, made music more accessible. But an even greater change was coming in the 90s and early 2000s with the invention of the DAW, or um, Digital Audio Workstation. This here is uh, one of the very earliest uh, DAWs, Cubase, uh, which is still around today. It's a very, very nice DAW. Um, but even then, it, it, was, it was much harder to use, much more limited. And what a DAW essentially has always been is a piece of software that can produce music start to finish. You can arrange, synthesize, mix, master, and mix down to a file that can be published. That's great. And it was, it made music so much more accessible that we started to get things like these. Forbes saw this as a big problem. They called it the $6.9 billion bubble. I have a problem with that. Um, first of all, they used the vague term electronic dance music or EDM. And second, there wasn't a bubble. This article was published in October 15, 2015. But the reason they saw this as a bubble and so many other people saw this as a problem was that anyone could make music now and, and why, why should that be the way it is? You should have, you should have money and you should have, you should have experience and you shouldn't, it, it should be a much more exclusive community was the way it was uh, seen by a lot of people. But this is not where we are actually going towards a, a problematic situation where a lot of people who, who don't really know what they're doing are in professional music. In fact, with websites like Audio Tool, uh, which I use, uh, you have free music making tools inside your browser, which also, in the case of Audio Tool, function as social media, where people can communicate, publish their tracks, and give feedback on each other's work. As we know, as we can see today, we're not in a, in a giant disaster in the music industry. I mean, 
It might come from other places like streaming, but it's certainly not due to the, the accessibility of the making of music. This has improved our community. It's allowed people with innovative ideas who might not be able to sell them uh, to um, their record labels or come up with the cash to back it up to create whatever it is they want in a very safe space. And this has created such a diverse community and so much more diverse musical styles. It's changed the face of music and continues to change the face of music. And it is one of the greatest things, in my opinion, to happen to the music industry in the past century. Thank you.